Dear friend, thank you for your endless support for my channel. As we promised you before, we continue with the TOEFL IBT, and then we took uh, speaking, then listening, then today we're gonna continue with the reading. TOEFL IBT reading. How a person can become an active reader. Number one, keep in mind to read the instruction at first to know what is required to do. This is very important. Pay close attention to the title of the passage, or sometimes we say the article. Number three, understand the passages, or sometimes article we said it, organization, and how the information in the passage or article are being presented. Maybe the article could be instruction given us, or historical events or cause and effects or maybe point of view of the author or argumentation etc. This is very important to know the organization in order to be able to answer the question. Reorder the information to keep it, it easier to understand what connect the information to each other. This is very important to know how the information are connected in the article or in the passage and to know the sequences of the of all pieces of the information in the passage so this is going to help us a lot when we answer this kind of questions rewarding the signal words and or recognize or reorganize sorry reorganizing the information to make it it easy to be understood Paraphrase the information using synonym to ease the selection of needed information. This is very important because you have to paraphrase it. As we said it before, always TOEFL and IELTS are paraphrasing the information because here you will never find the same answer, for example, same wording answer from the passage to the question. Then always they use paraphrasing and also always using synonym and to eliminate the unwanted information for example when we paraphrase it we know what information we need and then what information we don't need it read the introduction first and the first two sentences of each paragraph here it's important to just go fast on the introduction to know what the whole subject is about because in the introduction most writers will be, make a little summary about the whole passage or the whole article and also we have a paragraph because each article will have a lot maybe five six paragraphs we read the first two sentences we know from there because what the whole paragraph is about and then read the conclusion because here why we're reading both because we know the introduction and conclusion or same will be the whole summary of the whole article. And then we read the paragraphs here, for example, uh, paragraphs because we read the first two sentences, because we have a topic sentences, which is give us idea about that paragraph. Make a note about the topic. Here's important to know. And main idea of the whole passage. And also, here we have to make it for an each paragraph. For example, to make a short note, then we know when we look for information, we know where we have to look for the information. And it will save us time, and they save us a lot of time, and also finding the correct answer. Let's go to reading question styles. We know uh, TOEFL is 95%. Or you could say you could say always the say hundred percent is multiple choice. Then we have the first one. We have pros summary. Then the second part we have fill in table. They give us table. Then we have to fill it. Then we have insert text. Then we have sentences simplification. Then we have vocabulary. 
then we have inferences then we have rhetorical then we have the other two we call factual sometimes factual and then the second one will be negative factual information then the last one could be main idea what's the main idea each part we're going to explain it in more detail okay, let's go first we say TOEFL IBT reading we have some tips for you how to answer this kind of question because it said most of them you could say all of them is about multiple choice tip for answering TOEFL IBT multiple choice number one there is one correct answer when the question has four choices we have to be careful here when we have four a b c d is only one of them is correct while the correct answer might be two or more when the question has more than four choices here is important to know if we have a b c d is only one but if we have a, B, C, D, E, F, it means we have to make sure we have more than one correct answer. And it's always, as we say, it's always dependent on the question prompts. It means we have to read the instruction first to know what's required for us to follow. Number two, in most cases, there will be one to two distract answers among the given choice always they're gonna give us maybe one or two to distract our attention to the correct answer you have to be careful we call them a TOEFL tricks one or two of the distractors looks like the and the correct answer except you see here you have to be careful they look like the answer except there are some small details we have to be sure with those details making them the wrong choice this point is very important to know always the choice having similar question prompts wording here also is important if we look to the question and then give us exactly similar you could say until 95 percent similar question prompt wording is the wrong choice okay here you have to be careful as we said here always the choice have similar question prompts wording is the wrong choice because all english language assessments are focusing on synonym and paraphrasing because we have to ask ourselves if they give us the question and the same thing exactly worded in the article same was the point of the making exam or making test then we have to know all the questions will be coming as a synonym on or being paraphrased be aware of the misordering. Here is also important to know the misordering. It means the order given us from the question and also from the article are not same. Of the wording and the incorrect information, sometimes they give us information, maybe about 95% are correct, but there are one mistake in the answer. And then we have to know that is not the correct answer. Number six read the introduction first this is important to know because we said it in the introduction we will have idea about the whole paragraph or the whole passage or something called it the article and then read the first and the second sentences of each paragraph here when we read the first sentence the second sentences we will know what this paragraph is about and the conclusion to have a better idea about the whole passage sometimes we say the article okay here we have to read the introduction then 
one sentences, two sentences from each par paragraphs from the passage or the article, then we go to the conclusion because we say always the conclusion and the introduction are similar, then they give us the same idea. And then each paragraph, maybe they have different, been developed different idea. Strategy, how to answer multiple choice tests. This is very important to know. The processing, sometimes we call them the processing of elimination. It means P-O-E, it means process of elimination. First, start your elimination with the choice you are certain that they are incorrect answer. Then let's say if we have four, we delete some of them. Maybe let's say if even if we delete one, we're still with the three. Then we say, do not eliminate choices. You are uncertain. We have to be careful here. Or if we are uncertain, we are not gonna go deal this uncertain or you are you do not know what the choice means it means if we have confusion first let's say we delete whatever we are sure hundred percent are incorrect then whatever we see we are unsure or uncertain then we keep it because we don't know what the choice then number three select the right answer after eliminating all the incorrect choices because this will give you a better chances in selecting the right answer when the choices are reduced to less number because we said that you have four if we reduce it to three then we reduce another one then we end by two always in TOEFL we have two very close maybe about 75 79 percent they are so close then there are we call them a small details would make changes between the two. Then we will know before we go to the passage, we sometimes say to the article to make sure we choose or select the right correct. After elimination, select the answer that you are confident and understand. While eliminate the value and uncertain about it whatever we are not sure we know they are not correct then we just delete it okay let's say we delete we end up by two then we are not sure we just take a guess at the end Uh, number five, after elimination, the, the incorrect answer, then ending up with two very close in the information being given. Here is very important. Let's say you delete, they give you four, you delete two, you end it up by two. They are very, very close in the meaning and the information. Check, then we have to do it. Check with the passage if it's not helping. Let's say if we check with the passage, but still we are in confused, then the last resource we say make a guess about the answer at the end. We have to be very careful here. Number six, never ever leave any question not being answered. At the end, is to hear? At the end, then you say if you are not able to make the choice. Make a guess because here we don't leave any question and answer it. Let's go to the first kind of questions. We have this, we call them detailed reading questions. Detailed reading questions ask the task taker to look for specific pieces of information in the passage, which requires to read in more detail and to pay a close attention to the needed information. 
they ask you specific information, then you have to look for this kind of information. The best way to answer the detailed question style is to scan the passage to know what part of the passage to begin. If you remember, we said it in the beginning, you read the introduction, then you read the paragraph, each paragraph, one first, second sentences, then we know what's the idea about the paragraph and then the conclusion. Then when they ask this kind of question, because we have made it a note for those paragraphs, then we go directly to the note we wrote it, because this is going to save us time and also effort. The next step is to pay close attention to the information of the passage to find the correct answer. Then we say finding factual information. Then we say a specific fact or detail. This is one kind of question we're going to have how to answer it. Specific fact or sometimes say facts. All detail requires to identify a specific fact or detail stated in the passage. This form of question is identified when the following phrases, we have to be very careful for those phrases. Then you say, according to paragraph two, see here? Then we have to look only for paragraph two because it tell us the information we're looking for is in paragraph two. Then we say, what is stated in the paragraph three about maybe something then we look only for paragraph three sometimes we say when did maybe something then occurred okay then we say occurred or maybe present in the question prompt how are we going to answer this kind of question, for example? Answer this type of question requires two. This is the strategy you could use it. For example, we say, first, read very closely the signaled part of the passage and the keywords in the question in order to find the required specific information. Because give us number of the paragraph, we look for it. Then we say, eliminate the incorrect choice using no possible yes. Let's go here, let me explain it to you what I mean here. When we look at the information, if we see the information is not related to say, we say no. Then the second one, we're gonna find the information if related to the topic or the question, we say yes then some of them may be as possible then also we keep all three here no we know it's going to be opposite exactly in the passage when maybe it may be similar to the information in the passage then we keep it we just say no yes no yes whenever we have possible also we're going to keep it then at the end we eliminate what no we have it then we even for example yes we have it then if we end it more than one yes, then we choose, we here we make a guess. The best choice or the correct answer is usually restated. We have to be careful here. Or paraphrase it. Information in the passage which is not an exact repeat of it. It means here we have the information from the question and then from the passage but it are being paraphrased it means the information or the information is are being paraphrased it's not exactly then we have to be careful because we said it always TOEFL and Alice they use paraphrasing and then synonym number D compare the correct answer with the restated or paraphrase it information using synonyms. You see here, we have to be careful with the synonym for the question wording. It means we have to 
we have to compare it what we have the answer then we have the question then we have to use the paraphrasing and then the synonym to make them like comparing the two with each other in order to choose the correct answer number e be aware of the confusing distractions phrases where some part of the idea might look to be possibly the correct answer might be possible to be correct the answer the correct answer okay here we have to be careful the some of the answer as we said it will give us but some of them is going to be possibly because not exactly 100 percent we call them the distraction it means they give us some information but not full it has to be 100 percent exactly the same information however the information is not mentioned in the passage in full you see here number f using numbers and dates lacking main detail where the question is looking for it it means sometimes they give us numbers but the date the number maybe are correct but the dating for that is not correct then you have to be careful you have to be everything has to be exactly the same number g pay attention to the signal words this is important to know sometimes they give us first then we say next and also say however or maybe say but then it says for example then such maybe such as maybe such then and furthermore in addition or sometimes could say additionally then we those words or signal words are very important because it tell us where the information will look for it these phrases signal us to read and search for more information when we look for this may give us maybe first next then we know they are in order to answer the question okay then h before sorry read before and after the selected information to assure or to make assure ensure that you have chosen the correct answer when we have a time then we read before the answer and then after it to make sure we choose this correct one always keep in mind that TOEFL uses synonym and paraphrasing of the statement we have to make sure we know definitely the TOEFL not going to give us exactly same same wording from the question and the, in the article. Some detailed question might require to find more than one choice. We have to be careful also here because some of them may be more than one. You have to be careful. The other reason we say always read the instruction in order to answer this kind of question. Thank you very much. The next class or next lecture will be about negative fact. We took this one, the actual fact, it means exactly it.